My name is Elliot Wonenyika from the Child Accountants Academy and welcome to the revision of paper one from the mock examination that you wrote. So the purpose of this first session is to go through the case study, specifically the scenario information, to assist each other with general comprehension techniques. Because from experience that we have noted that it is very fundamental that before you answer any requirement, you've got a com comprehensive understanding of what you have been told in the case study. Because when you then come to answering the questions, you are expected to answer the questions within the context of the scenario. So failure to properly comprehend the scenario would then result in not being able to properly answer any given requirements. So going to our case study, we are told that all amounts are in RTGS dollars unless expressly indicated. This is very important. So whenever we're going to be seeing a dollar sign, it's referring to RTGS dollars. And going through the scenario given in the introductory paragraph, we are introduced to 21st, founded by Richard, Travis and Sarah. And we are also told that their vision was to start and create a hotel group targeting the younger generation, loosely termed millennials. So it's very important. So in terms of their business model, they are a hotel group, but they got a specific customer segment, being the younger generation. And it goes, the paragraph goes on to explain the thinking behind on having this particular model. And you are also told that the millennials cannot comprehend a world without the internet, smartphones and Netflix. Therefore, their desired experience in the hotel is different from middle-aged executives. So this paragraph is more or less explaining to you 21st hotel and 21st strategy in terms of their customer segmentation. And in the second paragraph, we are further told that the 21st strategy is to focus on client needs. And in this case, who are their clients? Is the younger generation, the millennials. So what are their needs? Technological and social environment. And we are told that 21st operates in Harare, Blawai, and Mutare. With each hotel having 69 rooms, and the rooms are designed to cater for the younger generation. TV, brightly colored rooms, user-friendly workstations, Wireless, wireless smartphone charging ports. So these are the features designed to target the, the younger generation being the millennials. So this overall context is very important to say in, in enabling you to understand the strategic objective of this of 21st. So now we're going to refer the information in the case study. We are told their financial year end, ends on 31 December of each year, which is fine. I'm also given information on the shareholding structure. So I need to know who are the shareholders and automatically I'm seeing something peculiar here. Ordinary shares have got two classes, class A and class B. That's interesting. And that is the context I'm, I'm dealing with. So I'm assimilating. So moving on with the case studies. I'm also told first venture capital fund was an early investment in 21st, buying into the vision of the, of the founders. So first venture capital then bought shares and also then gave a loan funding to 21st at the beginning of 2016 as part of capital to fund the expansion of operations, okay? The loan terms, I'm told that it is repayable within eight years from grant debt. And interest is charged at market-related interest and paid as in CAD. So those terms are very crucial. What am I getting here? So the loan was issued in 2016 with an eight-year repayment term. So as of today, so I need to say, what year end am I dealing with today? Therefore, what is the remaining period for this loan? So that I totally understand my timelines. Then further, the information, we are told that the employee share trust was established the campus in Sepin and acquired 10% shareholding and nominal value. Strategically, tra Richard Travis and Sarah thought it was important that employees also shared in the success of the business, okay? Then now, we're given class A and class B shares. So I now need to know what are the rights attached to these shares. So starting off with class A, I'm told that class A are entitled to one vote per share and they're also entitled to dividends, okay? Interesting. Class B have no right to receive dividends. So what do they have? but they are entitled to 10 votes per share. So if I'm holding one share, one class B share, it gives me 10 voting rights. So effectively, 
the value that can be attached to class B shares is arising from the voting right that they have. And then the value that can be attached to class A shares is arising from the voting right plus the right to, to dividends. So given those right to the shares, it means class B shares are in 33.3% of the total votes with class A shares holding them the remaining voting rights. Then, offer from first venture capital fund. So in the offer, I'm given restructuring of the loan. So this is a transaction. So whenever you get, you get transactional information, it's very important that you are clear and understand the nitty gritties or the bottled nuts of the transaction. So I thought that current 21st is a loan balance of 1.5 million. So remember the open paragraph. This is the loan which was given in 2016. And at that time, it did end year, eight year, ten year. And we are told that first venture capital is expressed interest to invest in class B shares. Okay? So they've submitted a proposal for 50% of their current loan to be converted, converted with their discretion into 3,000 class B shares. So 50% of 1.5, 750,000, okay? Into class B shares in three years time. Why three years? So if you look at it, currently we are as the 31 December 2018, and the initial loan was given in 2016. So from 2016 to 2018, how many years? 2016, 2017, 2018, three years. So what is the remaining tenure on the loan? So it means we are remaining with about five years. And these guys are saying we want the loan to be convertible to class 50% of the loan to be convertible into class B shares in three years' time. Okay? And today they will lend a further 1 million to 21st immediately. However, if not converted, the original, the existing repayment terms will continue to apply. So in this transaction, it's very important that you get your timelines right. What is happening today? So today, we'll get one million. What is happening in three years' time? If venture capital fund, we have an option to, to convert. So all this you're assimilating during reading time because when you then get the, time, the timeline wrong, it can then impact your interpretation or even a, a required you may be given with reference to this information. Then another offer which was made, which is offer to outright buy out of other shareholders. So first venture capital fund have indicated that they would be willing to, at any point to buy all the shares from any of the class A and class B shareholders. So they want to buy all the shares. So effectively, they want to buy 21st. And first venture capital fund is willing to pay 25% premium on the fair value of the shares. So the board then asks you, so in the event that the shareholders accept this offer, the board wants views evaluating the equitable, equitable allocation of the total purchase price between class A and class B shares. So in other words, the board is saying, let's say, first venture capital fund, say, guys, you are going to give you 25 million for your business. But when you go to the shareholders, we've got two classes of shareholders. How do we allocate the 25 million between class A and class B shareholders. That was the question. Okay, let's move on. Hotel membership strategy. So in this, so this is a strategy. So these guys introduced a guest for life membership program in 2018. So what is it? Benefits of becoming a member, 15 nights per year. 20% discounts on all food purchases. New members are charged a 250 entrance fee. And you are told that the cost of a standard room stay per night is $175. So the membership ran from 1 January to 31 December of each year, and membership fees in 2018 were $200 per, per member. And the membership are being charged monthly. And we are already told that the membership proved popular with both the public and corporates, 500 membership in total. So these are the structures. So if you want to enjoy the benefit of this Guest for Life membership, you pay a joining fee, then there's a monthly fee which is payable and then you expect to comprehend the benefits of becoming a, a member. 15 nights, bed and breakfast, 20% discount on all food and beverage purchases. Then another set of information, acquisition of Q brand clothing stores. So due to the economic instability experience in Zimbabwe, 
the board is concerned about the rising country risk. So to address the risk, the board has identified an opportunity to invest in, to invest in, in Q brands. A clothing chain store is very important. So this is an already operating clothing chain store, Q brand. Operating where? South Africa. What is their market segment? It's a value retailer. So what is a value retailer? So you find that value retailers are those that normally target the lower end of the customer markets. So the low to medium income earners. Listed on the JAC alternative index. Then note three explains to you what the, what is the Johannes Big Stock Exchange alternative exchange. Okay. And then we are told that without a formal approach, 21st is targeted certain shoulders of Q brand with an offer to purchase their shares at a price different to other shareholders. So effectively, 21st is looking to buy Q brand. Okay. Then we are told that there's no official offer approach has been made. 20 faces no focus on financial information or business plans for Q brand. It has undertaken the following benchmarking analysis of the value retailers in the clothing industry. And TIB has also relied on in information that they had received from Q brand when they made a pitch earlier on in the year. So you are given all this set of information, but did you understand what you're given? Revenue growth 25.5%, 21%, 21.5%. And you are also given revenue growth adjusted for synergic benefits from 21st. So the question is when I'm looking at revenue growth without synergic benefits and revenue growth with synergic benefits, how does it work? So I find that from a financial management and valuation theory, normally when I'm valuing a business from the perspective of the sellers, that is the Q brand shareholders, I take numbers without synergic benefits which effectively means these numbers but in this case since we are looking at these numbers from the perspective of 21st who intend to purchase Q brand it means to already I know that the numbers I'm worried about are these ones with synergic benefits happy okay then I would add with the margin add with the margin adjusted for synergic benefits same comments is applied in the previous Depreciation amortization to revenue, 5%, 6.5%. So to revenue. So it means depreciation for the year is always going to be a function of the, of the revenue numbers. Okay. We are given further information, depreciation and amortization to adjusted revenue, capital to revenue, working capital to revenue, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Cuban does not comply with IFRS, okay. They do not disclose all the details of the financial information, blah, blah, blah. Then we are also then given historical financial information for the 2017 and the 2018 financial year. Sales, EBITDA, finance costs, capital revenue, working capital investment revenue. So these numbers are relevant in then applying the growth rates given in the pre preceding pages. Okay. Tax is estimated to be 20% of earnings before interest and tax. Very important. Come to allowance are expected to be the same as depreciation and amortization going forward into the forecast period. Okay? Then you are told including the operating costs, deducting calculating EBITDA is the non cancellable list of an executive helicopter from Chris Airways PTY Limited at a fixed installment of 4 million rand payable annual in arrears. The lease agreement was correctly classified as an operating lease in terms of IS 19, IS 17 leases. So these guys, operating costs were including a a list. But what else am I told about the list? I'm told that the agreement commenced on 1 July 2017 and ends on 31 December 2020 and will be renewed afterward. As a 2018 it was reliable estimate is said that a similar executive helicopters can be leased at a market rate fixed instrument of 5 million payable annually in arrears. So effective it means after at the time at the expiry of our lease agreement we are if we are going to continue leasing this helicopter we will need to pay 50 million 0 0.5 million currently we are paying 0 0.4 million so you need to take cognizance well but when would this apply currently we're going to agreement up to 2020 we are going to be paying 0 0.4 million but 2021 going forward if we are going to renew we then need to consider the market related new lease render okay then you are given again information about possible labor that is happening within 
Q brand and the resulting lawsuit that came came through. Then we are given exit multiple methods. I believe most of you during maybe your previous studies you may not have done this method, the exit multiple method. But the scenario tried to explain how the exit multiple method works. So we are told that Q brand uses the exit multiple method to determine what? For the purposes of determining the terminal value. So it's purely for determining the terminal value, which is year 2021. And here we are given how the exit multiple method works. It calculates the remaining value of a company's free cash flows, which is the terminal value, produced after the projection period on the basis of a terminal year multiple. The exit multiple method assumes a business will be sold at the end of the projection period. And then a frequently used terminal multiple is EV over EBITDA. So how do you determine the exit multiple? The analysis of comparable actions will indicate an appropriate range of multiples to use. The multiple is then applied to the projected EBITDA in the terminal year, which is the final year in the projection period. So this provides a future value of terminal value at the end of the focus period year end. So we are told that for TIB, the estimated work of 12% and then exit multiple of 7. So this 7, how do I use it? So my terminal value based on the information provided is equal to the multiple of 7 multiplied by my EBITDA. Well, that's what I've been told in this scenario. We say the terminal value is then multiplied, sorry, the exit multiple is then multiplied by the EBITDA to get the terminal value. And I'm also told that the exchange rate is $1 SU13 rands. And the SA rand is expected to appreciate against the dollar by 10% annual over the next foreseeable future. So what's again important here is, I know that yes, I've been told that the rand is going to be appreciated against the dollar by 10% annual. But for the purpose, let's say hypothetically, I've been asked to do a valuation of Q brand. When I look, do the valuation, for the purpose of projecting my, for my cash flows, I need to project them in runs without converting the cash flows in RTGS dollars. Why? Because the work that I'm going to use to discount the cash flows is 12%, which is Q brand work. And if you remember how work is determined, it's by the cost of equity. It takes the risk-free rate plus the cap and formal formula. And the risk-free rate is as applicable to the SA market. So then very critical that I do not convert the cash flows in my focus period to RTGS, but I would rather do the cash flows in runs, then discount them to using my, my work. Then only after I've got my valuation runs, then I convert the value to RTGS using today's exchange rate. Okay, so financing alternatives being considered, we have got payment of out of out of existing cash reserves, obtaining a loan from NetBank South Africa, or issue convertible preference shares. So in these instruments, it's very critical you understand how the instruments work, how have they been structured, when are we getting going to get the money, when are the repayments going to be to be made. And I think just to highlight important of understanding the instruments, if you look at the medium term loan from NetBank, there's a funny structure that you don't ordinarily find. So I thought that interest would be at one percent above the prevailing SA overdraft rate of nine point five percent. Then the loan is to be paid in one bullet payment at the end of four years, and interest calculated and compounded annually in arrears and capitalized into the outstanding loan balance. So what I might do here? So over the course of the four years. We are not going to be making any repayments against the loans. So it means at the end of the four years, all the accumulated interest plus the initial principal amount are then going to be paid in one bullet payment. So that context is very important. And also understand what we mean by compounding and capitalizing into the outstanding loan balance. So it means this loan effect is a bit different from all the other loan structures that you traditionally find whereby repayments can be done either monthly, quarterly, during the loan tenure period. In this case, it's one bullet payment at the end of the loan period. Okay. Then you're also given information around the 
in offer by the Zimbabwe Rugby Union. So these guys, they are, they are going to host a rugby tournament in countries coming to South Africa and Kenya. And the ZRE has approached 21st with a request for accommodation, rooms and music cater for their guests. So this is the offer that they say. So they are saying team size South Africa is with 22 players, Kenya 12 players, and room specifications, South Africa want double standard room sharing, Kenya single standard rooms. Meals, breakfast and supper, for South Africa, Kenya breakfast, accommodation, 9 days, 11 days. And our red standard are as follows. Then these guys are saying, we are prepared to pay $110 bed and breakfast, and $150 bed and breakfast, and $30 for a single room, $110. Double room, $150. Supper, $30 respectively. So this, this is what ZRIU is offering. So definitely in your mind, you are going to be asking yourself, is this offer worthwhile to ZRIU? And to evaluate whether this offer is worthwhile to ZRIU, I then need to ask myself, am I going to be able to make a positive contribution if we take up this offer? But again, before I take up this offer, I then need to understand, so 21st is expecting 70% occupants. So if I take up this offer, do I have enough capacity? So I'm not saying the 30% remaining occupants, is it enough to cater for this, for this contract? So or already I'm looking at the possibility of a limiting factor. This is just me thinking already. I'm not calculating anything, but I'm just crystallizing as I'm reading. What can be the possible issues in deciding whether or not we are going to take up the offer by ZRIO. So we are also given a breakdown of some of the hotel operating costs, hotel cleaning, cost of linen, other running costs, blah, 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 blah. So this was the case study. And I really want to emphasize that for the purpose of you then being able to properly address the requirements, the comprehension of the scenario, very critical, understanding the context of the case study. So I'm dealing with 21st, a hotel group targeted in the younger generation named millennials that is the broader understanding i've been given the shareholding structure the different classes of shares there are some transaction offer in the op offer that have been made by one of the shareholders first venture capital funds etc so i hope this analysis has just given you some ideas of some of the things you need to be looking at during your reading time in order in, to, in order to be able to comprehend and understand the scenario okay thank you very much for taking time to watch this video i hope it has been very helpful helpful to all of you good day